All right, so first thing you need to do is get the setup looking like this. All right, then you're going to run the little um, strip of paper shiny side out down through the needles, okay, so that there's a little bit hanging below. Then you're going to clip the weight to the, t the bottom of the paper. Then what you're going to do is turn the top switch to 60 hertz, then turn the on switch and drop it quickly. And you're going to repeat this three times. Watch again in slow motion. Notice how important it is to keep a steady hand. Once we've done that, that's the first two steps of the instructions. Step three is to determine the times for each spark event. Yeah. Okay, so we're on step three now. And over to your right, I give you a diagram of what your tape is going to look like and a hint about what the times are going to be. It's got something to do with the time between each spark, as I told you in class. The sparks are happening at 60 hertz, which means one time every 60 seconds. So the time between each spark is 1 60th of a second. So if you double tap on a cell and put your formula bar in equals mode or calculator mode, you can actually type 1 divided by 60. And you'll notice that it turns it into a decimal for you. Do it again for the second spark, 2 over 60, 2 sixtieths, and again it'll turn into a decimal. That's a lot of button punching, and with a lot of button punching comes a lot of room for making mistakes. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a formula, and then we're going to use formula filling. To make a formula, tap the entry bar and put it in calculator mode. Then tap the cell with the number you're essentially dividing by, and then divide by 60. Now this cell isn't just a number, it's a formula where the cell that you tapped is the variable. We want to copy that formula into these other cells. So tap on it, hit fill, and then you can see you can drag it up, down, left, or right. Drag it to the right, and now these cells are essentially the number above divided by 60. Alright, for step four, what we've got to do now is enter our measurements. And when you send your tape through the timer, you're going to notice that it's got all these little dots on it. And you're going to need to measure the distance of those dots from the original, uh, the chubby one big dot. Okay, so line the tip of that chubby dot up with the zero mark on the ruler. Okay, then you're going to need to be observant and pay attention to where the dots are. Okay, they're very small and they can be hard to see, but you guys have good eyes. For the first dot, <coughs> you're going to try to do your best to see what mark it lies next to on the ruler. Okay, so this one, for instance, looks like it's somewhere in between the 2 and the 3 millimeter mark. We're measuring in centimeters, so you're going to have to move the decimal place for this one. Uh, don't be lazy and just say 2 or just 3. If you can see that it's somewhere in between, then say 0.25. Okay, then for the next one, um, likewise, this one looks like it's very, very close to the 6 millimeter mark, so we'll say 0.6 and you're going to use your keen eyesight and measuring skills for all of those that follow. Okay, These are going to be the first pieces of data that you'll use, excuse me, the second bit of data that you'll use to enter into your spreadsheet. spreadsheet. <coughs> excuse me. Um, essentially just take those numbers you measured and in order enter them into the first green row. Be very very careful because there's a lot of opportunity for punching the wrong buttons here or missing a decimal. Alrighty, you will notice here that I made a mistake. Okay, I've got the decimal in the wrong spot. Something you don't want to do 
is try and delete the cell okay don't ever delete a cell never if you really need to change what's inside it just write over it even if you have several mistakes in a row just hit next spacebar next spacebar next spacebar because you'll lose all the formatting if you delete a cell All right, for step four, we're going to convert our centimeters into meters. And because there's 100 centimeters in a meter, that's essentially going to be dividing all of our centimeters by 100 to turn them into meters. Okay, what you're going to notice is that we're only using three significant figures, so numbers is going to automatically round for you. You'll notice that that number is 0 0.003 instead of 0 0.0025. That's okay. Instead of doing all the bunch button punching, what we're going to do is use a formula. If you click on the cell above, that will act as a variable, and then divide that by 100. So now, when you go to copy these, this formula, it's essentially going to say, wherever I'm trying to put this formula, filling, it will say the cell above divided by 100. Okay, and you do that by closing out, tapping, fill, and then drag. Now we're ready for step five, which is the velocities of the intervals. And you remember the formula for the velocity is delta x over delta t, which is essentially xf minus xi over tf minus ti. So I'm going to use a formula and type xf minus xi, but I made a mistake, I need to use my parentheses. Parentheses, xf minus xi, close parentheses. Okay, then I can say divided by tf over ti, but I gotta use the second set of parentheses. And I forgot again. So I gotta open a new set of parentheses, TF minus TI, clicking on the final cell, or the TF is the cell directly above, minus TI, which is the one before, then close my parentheses. Remember how we filled, because we're definitely gonna need to do it again, because that was a pretty big formula. So tap, fill, and drag. All right, step seven is the last hardest step. It's finding the acceleration. Remember, constant acceleration formula is a lot like constant velocity formula, except it's VF minus VI. So remember to put your entry bar in formula mode or in calculator mode, open parentheses, VF is the cell directly above minus VI, the one before, close my parentheses, open a new set of parentheses and I forgot again I bet a lot of you guys will forget at least once so open a new set of parentheses TF minus TI close your parentheses and there you go a lot of you guys are gonna be asking how can we use constant acceleration and constant velocity for the same situation and I'll tell you in the next movie after this if you're interested in listening. It essentially involves um, breaking up the situation into little intervals and then making some approximations that really don't matter in the end. For the last step we're going to get the average acceleration. After all this is supposed to be a constant acceleration situation. So Instead of doing it the old-fashioned way, we're going to go into calculator mode and use a function. In other words, a pre-made formula. So go to functions, click on average, and then you're going to see a blue cell. What that blue cell means is that it's waiting for you to select a range of cells for it to work the formula on. So I select all the blue cells that I want to calculate the average for, it would just be these red ones here. And then when I let go, 
and hit OK or hit Select, it will calculate the average of those cells that I selected. And there we have the average. Now, some of you keen failures might recognize what this red cell is supposed to be and that it's not. Okay. This weirdo right here is much, much larger than all the other cells. That's what you call in statistics an outlier, meaning something's wrong with it, so we're going to pitch it. This is a cell that you can delete because it's screwing up our overall results. If we delete just this one, look how much better our average acceleration gets. Do this sparingly. Now for the very last thing you need to know is you have some conceptual questions down here at the bottom. Okay, read the question, then you need to click in the big blank space to answer it. This, you're gonna type like a text answer. It asks you a question, you're gonna answer it in text. Okay, I have highlighted these uh, into a colored font so that I can read your answers a little more clearly. Actually, this is where most people lose points because they kind of get lazy and stop being diligent. And though we almost always work with a lab partner, this is the part that you both need to do separately. This section down here, that's for me, not for you, no touchy.